Okay, we're out here at Model Die in Grand Rapids this morning. We're going to do a measurement session on this door panel tool. But before I do that, I wanted to show you guys a single point calibration. What I've done is, uh, yesterday we were doing some laser scanning with this arm, so what I did is I peeled off the LLP, and I've got the 6 millimeter probe on there now. So I'd like to do a calibration before I jump into the measurement session. But what's nice is uh, on all of Ferro's probes, you'll see that the size of the probe is actually listed right on the side. Like right here, it'll say that it is a six millimeter probe. So that's perfect, I'd like to know that. I don't wanna have to take a caliper to it. So I will set that back down and I will go into my SAT file here. I've got a fresh one up and I'm gonna go under the devices menu and then under probes. Once I click on that, I get this probes menu right here. The first thing to do though is make sure that you have got the current probe set to the six millimeter probe, which is listed on the side of the probe. The other thing I wanted you to notice is there's a lot of other probe options underneath here. So make sure that you're on the right probe selection. Okay, now I'm gonna jump into this single point or this whole calibration. So I'll click on that. Okay, now I've got this screen right here, which is kind of a great illustration that'll show just how I'm gonna go through this calibration. And I've got a seventh axis on my arm here, which is this trigger or this pistol grip. If you've got a sixth axis on here, you'd be grabbing right around here. What I usually like to do too, is I like to have the cone, our calibration cone, a pretty healthy way away from the arm, from the arm base. And then I usually let the arm just rest here like this since it's counterbalanced. What I do is I put the probe inside of that cone. And then what I usually do is I'll start with my finger just lightly touching that probe so I know it won't come out of the cone. And then I'll push the green button and I'll swipe up and let go. And I'm swiping a little bit more than a 90 degree path. And then I'll go into this other opening here. I'll punch the green button, swipe it past 90 and let go. And I'll go into this third opening. I'll punch the green button, swipe up to there and then I'm gonna let go. If you had a six axis arm, you would be done now. But on my illustration, you'll see I've still got one rotation to do. So now what I'll do is I'll take this last rotation of the seventh axis and I'm gonna push the green button, rotate around and let go. Then I don't have to compensate inside of the cone. What I can do is pull out and then hit the red button. Then Farrell goes through and it solves for the best fit point in the center of that cone. And as you can see on my screen here, the calibration status is passed and it's got today's date on it at 8.24 in the morning. So I'm gonna say okay to that. And then the next screen that comes up again is this initial probe screen. What I like to do though, even though I passed, I like to look at the view log. Once I click on the view log, what it does is it pulls up the values that it, uh, that it calculated for that calibration. What I usually like to look at though is my two sigma value. That's the value that Farrell uses to test for the pass or the fail criteria. And right now it's saying that I'm about maybe a half a thou away from a true zero point. So I do like that. I'll say that's an awesome calibration and say okay to that and okay to that. And then I'm ready for my measurement session. But one thing I did want to make note of is that, say you're gonna to go to a campus where you're not sure quite what you've got as far as a base to do this calibration on. Maybe you'd like to do that back at your lab or back at your office and do a, a calibration. I knew that before I came here, I'd have a bed that I could do this calibration on and it would be bomb proof. So I just took our calibration cone and just set it right in the same vicinity as I'm gonna be doing my measurement on. So we're ready to do a measurement session now in this panel. So stick around, we're gonna jump in and do a CAD data alignment next.